So I'm back here on campus. I'm actually in my personal research laboratory. This is the hydrogeology laboratory right across uh, the hallway from my office. And I'm here because I want to measure porosity. So when you're calculating groundwater velocity, we calculate the Darcy velocity with uh, negative K times dHDL. But in order to turn that into an actual seepage velocity or the velocity of the water through the pore spaces, we need to know porosity. Um, so typically what I would do is I would just say, well, let's assume a porosity of 0.3. That's the kind of like hydrogeologist just average, just kind of a guess. It, it kind of summarizes what we see in most aquifer materials. Um, but let's get a little bit more quantitative. Um, since we collected a sample with our well installation two weeks ago, I've got a sample right here that we can use to calculate porosity. And as it turns out, there's a simple method for calculating porosity. And it's very similar to the um, method that you would use to calculate volumetric water content. Here, what we need to know is not the bulk density, but we need to know the dry bulk density. And if we subtract the dry bulk density divided by the particle density from one, then that will tell us the porosity, okay? So the particle density is gonna be the density of the grains in here, and that has to do with their composition. It has to do with what minerals make up these grains. And I will tell you, uh, probably about 95, maybe even greater uh, percent of this is just quartz. And that's simple. We expect to see that in our area. We have a lot of clastic, siliciclastic sediment, mostly quartz grains, uh, by the time you get to our portion of the United States. So quartz and many other silicates as well have a density of 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. So pretty easy. We, we know what the particle density is. Now, the dry bulk density is something that we're gonna to have to measure. And the dry bulk density would be the density of a sediment sample that's been dried. And I actually left this sample that we collected during the well installation, I left it in the oven for about two weeks. So this is very dry. All I need to do is I need to determine the density then, the dry bulk density, and I need a mass and a volume. So I'm going to use a graduated cylinder and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure out um, 15, no, let's call it 10 cubic centimeters of sediment here. And then I'm gonna determine the mass of that 10 cubic centimeters. And I'll divide the mass by the volume, essentially divide the mass by 10, and I've got a dry bulk density. So very quickly here, let me go ahead and measure out 10 cubic centimeters of sediment. So I'm just carefully pouring there, titrating, if you will. I'm a little bit below 10 milliliters. And um, one thing about porosity is we know that porosity is affected by the compaction of the grain, the way that they're arranged, uh, the grains are arranged in there. And it's actually gonna be hard to match the compaction that we had in the field before this sample was dug up. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that when we drilled that well, we used the auger, we broke up all of those grains, we dug them up, put them in a bag, they've been jostled around, so the sample has been disturbed. So I'm gonna try and recompact this. And all I'm gonna do is just tamp this down a little bit. So I'm gonna tamp this down, try and get those grains closer together. That's gonna to lower the porosity in this sample, but I'm trying to make it match the field. And there's always gonna be some challenge taking a disturbed sample and measuring the hydrologic properties. But this, I would say, is better than just 0.3, just assuming 0.3 is a porosity. So tamp it down a little bit more. Okay, so now I am right at 10 milliliters of sample there. So 10 cubic centimeters right at this line. That's exactly where I wanna be. So I've got a scale right here, my analytical scale. Um, I've got a medicine cup in there that I'm gonna use for my wave vessel. This, this big graduated cylinder is a little bit too big to fit in there. I'm going to tear this scale with the plastic medicine cup on there. So now it says 0.000, 0 
uh, grams. And that way I can just pour my sample straight in here and the mass of the uh, medicine cup has already been subtracted away. It's already been teared out by our scale. So let me pour this sample in here. Make sure I get all of it that I can. Okay. And I'll put it on the scale, close the door, and we will see what we get for our mass. Okay, the mass that I'm getting here is 16.20 grams. Um, it actually goes down 16.2020, but we really don't need that many significant figures if our particle density is only 2.65. We're, we're not going to go down that, that small of a level in our porosity anyways. Um, so 16.20 grams. So if it's 16.20 grams, we use 10 cubic centimeters. You guys can do this at home without a calculator. We can calculate the dry bulk density. Dry bulk density, remember density is equal to a mass over a volume. Dry bulk density would be 16.20 grams divided by 10 cubic centimeters. And all we do is move the decimal over by one space. The dry bulk density, the dry bulk density would be 1.62 grams per cubic centimeter. 1.62 grams per cubic centimeter. So we could calculate, and we will calculate, the ratio of mass, or the ratio of the dry bulk density, so dry bulk density, that's, uh, what do we just have, 1.62 grams per cubic centimeter, divided by the particle density, that's 2.65 for quartz, grams per cubic centimeter, and that's gonna give us a percentage of the sample that's quartz, as it turns out. If the dry bulk density was 2.65 and the particle density was 2.65, that means there's no openings, there's no open space, the porosity is equal to zero, it's 100% quartz, it's a solid quartz crystal at that point. Um, but if the dry bulk density is less than the particle density, the reason the dry bulk density would be less than the particle density is because we have open space. And since the sample is dry, that open space has no mass. It's basically just air. Okay. If it was wet, then it would be a combination of air and water. So that's why we need dry bulk density. So let's say that my dry bulk density was half of the particle density. That means that half of my sample is made up of grains. So one minus a half, the remaining volume of my sample would be open space. It would be pore space. So if I take then one minus the dry bulk density, 1.62 grams per cubic centimeters, divided by particle density of 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter, that's going to allow me to calculate the porosity. So I'm actually not going to do that here on the video. I'm going to let you do that. And, and I'm going to let you use that porosity value for your groundwater velocity calculation, okay? And I'm gonna save this number. This porosity is gonna come in handy. I'm gonna use it for this year for calculating my own velocity to check your work, but I'm also probably gonna use it for future years as well. So you guys are taking part in hydrology history as it turns out.